what we do is join the palms and when you bow underneath me, right hand, right hand, the, the wrist rests first and then your right knee on the head and then your left knee and then your left hand join your right hand and then your head, your um, forehead goes first. The position you need to be in is the, according to the same law, it's like the coach position. That means the back has to be downwards. Not like that. Like that. Properly. This is called the arm prostration. And then your palms open, facing upwards. Um, when you do that, you can imagine Buddha's walking towards you and your, your palms is inviting him over. Uh, stepping on your palms and then you stand on the upper wrist and then stretch out and then once you finish curl up your palm into a face position and then turn it down and then you, uh, stretch it back and first you don't stand straight away you do half new like this your uh, hand joins together for the palm uh, join your palms together uh, and then stand up. How do you stand up? Remember when you have rope, you're prone to trip. But right now we just assume there's no rope. So avoid coming your hand, your right hand. Right, right hand rest on the pad, padding. And then your left leg supporting the first. And then your right leg comes up. Sorry, very bad speaking. So I'll do it again. Right arm, right leg, right knee, left knee. And then left arm, and then just uh, hips down, palms up. Stretch slightly forward, imagine you are inviting Buddha over, and then you trip, that's it. Throw out your hands, uh, palm down, loose, and then stretch yourself up with your back, and then like that, halfway, and then left leg, and right leg. Because last time I did, I did like this. The very full into warm bar told me that you're going to spray your whole thing. Wait, when you get off, your right palm down and your left on your, on your thighs. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For the best, I know it's hard to stretch a bit. If you're not comfortable, you can just kind of look through. Yes. I do that, but you <laughs> stand up. The yeah. right way should be like this. Otherwise, you're going to hurt your if you're doing like four like, hours. Like this. Like, uh, yeah. I remember that they were the us to do this and like that. Yeah. yeah. So we come up, you need to like, yeah. it's a porch. So when you join, when you would shoot, the hand should be like this, downwards. So first, you downwards, right, you join your arms. And the first sequence is put it in the, um, we call it the mudra, the, the, the impression of the hand. This is the mudra where Chayanri Buddha was sitting when he did. And then your index finger pointing downwards. And then when you come up, pointing towards your forehead. Don't, don't do that. Just you know, parallel to your forehead. And then the rest of the position. So we'll start with join your arms. Okay, this is the half ball. And then when you go downwards, the sitting meditation mudra, I don't know what the name is. And then your index finger pointing out as you move up. And then the tip of your index finger should be parallel to your forehead. Like slightly closer, lean a little bit. And then back to the joint position. Um, this signifies concentration. Because our mind is everywhere, 10 of them as a symbol. And then we join our arms together into one spot, which is our heart. We need to focus at this very moment. When we bow with the elbows back, four weeks to the other, the world the will be all in one seat. And then when we do this mudra, I haven't looked up into it, I don't know why we can't really do that, but there is a meaning here, which I will find out. I just do it. So, <laughs> so there we go. There are so many things around here, like why do we have 
木鱼 ，what do we have to cheat? Other than instruments, musical instruments, it's also、um, yes, it's a signal everyone should come into the temple. Back in the days, we had this huge monastery compound. How do we get everyone there? We go to Fogwangchan Nanjing Temple. They model after that. It was not into the big drum, boom, 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 and the big clock. And then when you go into the big bell, when you went into the main hall, you know where the Buddha. Is all the three Buddhas mostly in Chinese Buddhism? There will be Shaolin Buddha, Amitabha Buddha, and Medicine Buddha. And then what what happened is you walk in there, and they will start doing the sequence as you see in the chanting.、Um, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure if you're listening. So since we're here, do you guys know what offering water means? Why do they offer water? I know Jane knows the reason. Water means it's a how to say it? it's a how to say purify our heart. Our heart must be at peace and tranquil with the water, which I do not have. I need to have it right now. And as pure as water, as peace and as pure as water. So if you have nothing else at home, which is what I I am. In my home, I don't have a Buddha's small statue. I just offer water. That's it. That's what Master Ching Gong does. And those. It's not for Buddha to drink. He doesn't have body. He doesn't drink. It's for us to remind ourselves. Everything is to remind us. Why do we have ashram? Why do we have the incense? So to tell us that you know. Why do we have incense? Oh, that one is for the oil lamp, which we won't find it here. So they used to have oil lamp, but back to the incense first. The incense is just yeah, like you say, I think signifying the dharma, I think,、um, and, and also the karma that we produce has to be free, has to be good. Also, I think the incense, like it was hard at the beginning, and then it becomes softer. So that I remember that represents something as well. But、uh, incense usually is used to signify, you know, when 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 we start the incense, we actually have a puja in 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 India, in Chinese it's called chanta. We sing the puja, praise, high, we use the Christian incense. Uh, he to you know to signify like now we're starting we are we need to have some ceremony to tell ourselves we are starting now let's get serious let's concentrate this is your way to get out of this place and then as it goes if you think like that everything has meaning so this one means the, the Buddha Dharma spread towards the ten years and also the oil lamp which you won't see much in the modern setup means that second. Um, we provide hope, light for others by reducing our own suffering, by at the expense of ourselves. So we're willing to sacrifice whatever we are not willing to sacrifice in order to complete us. But it's a it's a sense of selflessness, and and this is what basically we are going to suffer as we present to us. Other than that, this is of course housing the shari ram. Fruit and flowers. Fruit and flowers, yes. Fruit represents the effect. Flowers represents the cause. Without flowers, there's no fruit. Flowering leads to fruit. So cause and effect、It、reminds us why do we need to always provide flowers and effect. Why do we always need to provide food to Buddha? Is it because they want to eat? No, they don't need that. They are, it's just to remind us every time I put flowers in, I need to plant the cross. Every time I offer the fruit, I need to remind myself if I want to have a good life, which is a fruit, I need to plant a good cross, which is a flower. And starting from there, you start to stretch out like everything you encounter every time you walk into the temple. Whatever happens on the outside, you you use this as a reminder. Okay, now I'm in this space, right? This very serene and peaceful place. I'm gonna let go of all that thing, you know, all the 
or pain or suffering or happiness or anything, leave it behind. But focus only on me at this very moment. And every time I do this ritual of you know, seeing the puja, holding the incense, um, smelling the incense, it, it's a reminder, looking at the Buddha's face, it's, if I want to have, you know, the look like the Buddha, what do I need to cultivate? And this is the result. So you need to come with the course the result. And you can think about your life. It will happen. It will just tell you why, why do I have these issues. The cause and the effect. It will just remind you the cause and effect. Remind you the Dharma will help you. Remind you that you know, in the end of the day, uh, this is a role model, a teacher. Uh, not a god, not a deity. You do not treat it like that. Obviously, the god and deity will respect the teacher. He's a teacher of heaven. And yeah, that's it. Anyone know why does the statue always have three? Always comes in three. Very seldom they have one. They do have one, but most of the time they have three. Anyone has any hypothesis? Theory? Yes, yeah. That's right, it's always have three, right? Three legs. Yeah. yeah. Symmetry. Symmetry, right? And yeah, like in Chinese, Wusan Hu Chen Li. Without Chen Li, it's not complete. Everything has to be. In Taoism as well, it's not Yitzhen. Yitzhen, the Earth, and the Sun, the Sun, the Something like that. The whole point of having three, without going to find that, is just simply, Buddha means the complete as well as another. If you attain this, right, you will need two elements. One element is always about wisdom, sharp, wheat. Severing order. Severing order of things. Order troubles. Very sharp, seeing through the reality of things as is. This is wisdom. And this side represents compassion. Wisdom and compassion. Zi, bei, zi, bei. Compassion means like what we call humanities or capacity to love, capacity to care. So if we just purely have one without the other, you will not be able to achieve Buddha. Coming from all of the Buddha, um, you can um, pay with respect to Buddha by three months. So yeah, it's always having a tree because it, um, it shows you um, if you want to be a complete person, which is what Buddha represents. It's a simple, as much as the real person. You will be this person. If you want to be this person, you need to have a complete practice on both sides. One is you need to be sharks, you need to be wise, you need to know cause and effect, all the dharmas, all the classes you have, all your um, lessons in your life. If you have to the back, relax. Don't worry. Um, and then compassion. You need to have the capacity to care, to love, to um, empathize, you know, soft and sharp. Those qualities is what made a Buddha a Buddha. So every time you look at the Tassu Tsukusa, the, I forgot the Sanskrit, but universal word, you think about, you know, in terms of pure land, Tassu Tsukusa means, say, severing through all these uh, troubles by concentrating all your six wheels, all your six faculties, your sight, your smell, your sight, your hearing, your touch, your taste, your thoughts, only into this article. When you do that, when you look at me, think about this. All your six wheels only on the And then when you look at what is our one mean, which is very famous, very sharp. You think about what you do to your parents, what you do to your colleagues, what you do to your fellow friends, to your loved ones, to people you don't like as well, to people you just test, to annoying people, to people you love, compassion and equal. You need to cultivate that sense of no, neither like nor dislike, neither hate nor love, neither ask or we will see you who sees you sir. neither begging, yearning, neither craving, nor, nor, dis, uh, nor more loathing. Uh, just back to Pindan, uh, equal, 
sorry, I'm just resetting this to draw the book. Um, basically, what it means that the compassion of one, you, the ultimate form of compassion is equal. It doesn't matter if you like or dislike. You treat them as if it's your self. You have two sides, right? You have a brighter side, you have a darker side. And you have to reconcile. You can't just know the darker side and just say, I'm like this. It's self ignorance. You also cannot just focus on the dark side and say, I'm like that. I can't be any better. That's denying yourself rule. You need to take care of these two sides, equalize it with compassion. To know that, you need to have wisdom. We need to focus your faculties only on one, on one spot. In our case, we use Anto as a method, also an end. In normal case, we sit down and have a meditation. Some cases, we walk in circles just to engage every senses you have. So, Emily, Jennifer. <laughs> Thank you for coming. So I'm just going to have a quick uh, revise before we go into the 15 minutes. What time do we have? Okay, 51. So I won't drag too long. Do you know why do we um, offer? Do you know why do we offer waters in the temple? Any theories? Yeah. Purity. Purity. Yeah. As in that's that's one more. One triangle, other than purity, what does it represent? Um, in calmness, because it's yes, just equality, yeah. tranquility, yeah, calmness. So calm and purity. So if you have nothing else in your home, when you move out or something in a new city, in a place, which is why you have, you can invite a small statue of Amitabha Buddha, and then just have a small, nice, beautiful glass. Mm -hmm. It has to be clear, see-through glass. And then just water. You don't need anything else. Just that. That's the, that's the core. And then the rest, uh, like what you leave us. What does fruit mean? Why do we offer fruit? Is are they hungry? No. <laughs> They're not. So what's the theory? Cause and effect. That's right. There you go. So this is the effect. The effect. Yeah. And this is the cause. There you go. Cause and effect. Why do we have incense? And do, like you guys have been talking about it, why do we need to have incense? What kind of senses does it engage in? Smell, right? And it, it, may, it, it means that our, our the Dharma, you know, we need to keep immersed. Yeah, you got it. You need to keep immersed in the Dharma so that your whole body smells the Dharma, which is fragrant. The, the karma purity. And I also, also have a have a last minute realization. In um, pure land Buddhism, what does this mean? Cause, effect. And instead of the conventional thing, you need to have a cause and you have effect. What you do with Amitabha Buddha is Amitabha, that's his fruit of labor, give it to you. His fruit is your cause. When you chant the cause, you're already realizing the effect. Cause and effect happens at the same time. Instead of the conventional, you first practice the ten uh, virtue, and then the five precepts, and then the three, it's, it's a step by step. But in, in Amitabha Buddha, you compress all the, all the steps into one. Cause and effect happen at the same time. They are not separate. And that is very sophisticated. Once you have an appreciation of what it means to you. Instead of taking many lives, you need to, oh, first I need to be a heavenly being. I'm a fool. Oh, I want to be a heavenly being. I practice arahat. And then I go into the, 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 the bodhisattva and stuff. You immediately compress. You go straight to Buddha. You go straight to the highest level of bodhisattva because of his power. And then you slowly work your whatever you like in there. Yeah, we'll talk about it. We have plenty of time for that.